Hey y'all, welcome to At Home with Chef Jolie. Now, to all my friends, my foodie family, that's true to this and not new to this, well, welcome back. Today, y'all, it's a special episode because I have a special guest that's joining me. And let me tell you about the cocktail because y'all know it's spooky season, right? So we are gonna be making a witch's potion. It's a special martini that you gotta stay tuned to watch. And of course, we gotta have something to eat. We're gonna do a blackened white fish with dirty rice and a spicy Creole sauce. So come on, y'all, let's go to the kitchen. Let's stop by the bar and let's get this witch's potion brewing. Let's go, come on. Tell me now, are you hungry? Looking for something for your tongue, Okay, y'all, we gotta get into this cocktail for spooky season. It is called a witch's potion. You see my little witch shoes here? Ain't they so cute? They came from my, my special guest. So before I tell you all about her, let me tell you about the cocktail. So it's a martini. I have some vodka. I have some apple liqueur. These are frozen blackberries. All that's in there. I muddled it all up. I got some simple syrup in there too. And look how cute my martini glasses are. This is just um, some simple syrup around the rim and some purple sanding sugar. Now, my guest is an amazing celebrity Christmas tree decorator. So she can decorate your tree and she also does fall decorations too for like your porch and all of that stuff. Um, she decorates my trees too, cause I could decorate a cocktail, but child, let me try to decorate a tree is all bad. So I want to bring her in in just a second. Before I do that, I want to shake up the cocktail. I just added some um, lime juice here and I don't have any ice in here because we're going to add a special ingredient when AB comes in. That's her name. She goes by AB um, to chill it down and make it all witchy and perfect. And before she comes in, you know I gotta ask y'all for one quick favor. One favor. Oh, it's so hard for me to ask this, but I'm gonna ask anyway. Subscribe to my channel. That's what I want you to do. Subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications. Make sure you um, like the episodes too. And make sure you share them as well. And comment, let me know what you all think. Let me know what you think about this witch's potion. Let me not spill it. Is is the witch trying to make me spill the drink? Them witches be, oh, them witches be tricky. You see that? Mm, mm, mm. That's never happened before. I think the witch has got a hold to me. But I'm gonna bring out my girl, AB, because I think she may have something for the witch. So I don't wanna hold y'all too much longer before I bring out my very special guest, celebrity Christmas tree decorator, AB, come on in, AB. Hey, friend, how Hi. you doing? How are you? I'm good. I'm excited about this drink, first of all. Are you? You see Absolutely. the witch that made me spill the drink I all see, everywhere? I see. That's that... okay. She wanted some too. That's all. She's here in spirit. That's okay. I'm going to pour it up. Look at the color. It looks so cute. You know what? Let me take that off because I have all these blackberries muddled in here. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm going to strain it. Oh, like I love that. that color. So cute. Isn't it like perfect? for Halloween, spooky season. It. That's what y'all told me it's called. And I know it's easy enough for me to be able to duplicate at the house too. I think that I'm it gonna is. have to make this at the house. I think you can, I think you can. Let's see if I can. You know what I need to do? I'm gonna dump this just like this. Mm -hmm. There we go. Cause we had all those blackberries in there. And you told me, cause you know, I always ask all of my guests, are they cocktail drinkers or mocktail drinkers? Hey, you know, I'm a cocktail drinker. And you told me that your favorite spirit is vodka. Mm -hmm. It is. And as long as it's fruity. So yes. when you're at home, and you're entertaining. Do you entertain a lot at home? I don't entertain a ton, but my husband and I love a good cocktail. So okay. every now and again, we have to, you know, get on uh, YouTube and, and check you out and see, <laughs> you know, get us some good inspiration for a good cocktail. So, but yeah, we don't entertain a ton. 
Okay, so before I finish off the cocktail with my very special ingredient, you were saying, I was asking you, do you like to make cocktails at home? Um, I do, I do, absolutely do. Um, so we love a good vodka drink. Mm -hmm. I actually kind of like a Moscow Mule situation. Oh, and I yeah. absolutely love my fruity drinks though. So okay. I'm super excited to see what you've uh, made us today. This is fruity, but it has a kick. So uh, I don't want us to be like laid up like the witch here <laughs> <laughs> after we drink yeah. this, but it has a little kick. So here's what I'm gonna add. Look oh, at that. Yeah. That's awesome. I love it, I love it. This is just dry ice, y'all. And I don't know like where you're watching this at, but if you have a Kroger in your area, I got this dry ice from Kroger. Wherever they keep the regular ice for the regular people, the <laughs> fancy ice for fancy people like us, it's right next to it. So it. there you go. This section or this segment of the show is called Quality Control. Okay. So cheers. Cheers. We're gonna taste it. Cheers oh, to y'all. Happy spooky season. This is our witch's potion. Oh, that's good. Is it fruity? Oh, that's good. Mmm, it's so good. I can taste the blackberry. Can you taste the apple? Mm-hmm. I can, all of it. You can taste all of it? That's, Especially that apple coming through. Oh, that's really good. That's the best thing about mm -hmm. a cocktail is when you can taste it. Somebody was telling me like, uh, I don't know anything about making cocktails. It's really just like cooking. Absolutely. And you told me on a scale of one to five, like I would say I'm a five <laughs> on a scale of a one five. to five, but you told me you were a four. You know, I'm pretty good in the kitchen, absolutely. I feel like when you can be trusted with like the Thanksgiving dressing, that you do something right. So. Dressing yeah. or mac and cheese, if they trust you with that. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. I'm calling AB for my Thanksgiving this year. Cause I be tired after cooking for all of DFW. Last thing I wanna do is cook, so I'ma call you. But you know what, but even with me, I'm out decorating all these Christmas trees and my family has a nerve to also want a Thanksgiving meal. So, you know, I gotta make it work. I gotta, so you know. So what are we gonna do? You know, I, I might can bring you a, uh, you know, a little section over here to the house for you. Yeah. Okay, cause mm -hmm. you don't live that far, so. No, I don't live that far. Mm -mm. All right, so y'all heard it <laughs> right here on YouTube. AB is gonna make uh, my Thanksgiving dinner and mm -hmm. decorate my Christmas tree. At the same time, I don't have to do anything. But there you back go. Yeah, I just drink, drink cocktails. Some, yeah, when I come decorate your tree, absolutely. Yeah. All right, you heard it. So we're about to get ready to make this blackened white fish, and we're gonna have some dirty rice with it mm -hmm. and a spicy Creole sauce, and it's all inspired by one of your favorite dishes at Papa Do's. Yes, yes, yes. So pressure is, well, the pressure ain't on me because you No, because you got the, oh, oh. Well, the pressure is on me apparently then. Four yeah. out of five, you cooking. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to that, cheers right. to that. Y'all, let's go cook. Okay, we're back. It is time for AB to cook and it's time for me to just enjoy my cocktail. Okay. Yeah, that's what I do when I have a guest. I sit back and we talk mm -hmm. and the guest cooks. Okay. Okay, you down? I'm down, I'm ready. She's a four. So she's ready, 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 ready. Let me tell y'all something about this dry ice before we get started, because okay. you were telling me before we got started, you almost had a situation in Miami with dry ice. Dry yeah. ice can be dangerous, so here is the disclaimer. Don't touch it with your bare hands, mm -hmm. please, and don't uh, ingest the dry ice. You let it melt in your drink, because what happened to you? So I went to a restaurant there and I was just so excited. It was the first time I had a drink that had the dry ice in it. <laughs> and I went and I took a big sip of it and some of it got in my mouth and I just kind of like froze up. You know, I was like, oh my Your gosh. Throat, yeah, I mean, it was just a little bit of it, but I could feel it and I was like, Oh, you know, because they told us the same thing that you said, like, don't drink it, and I did. And I thought that my whole throat was about to be gone. <laughs> so, y'all, yeah. you heard yeah. it from AB, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. Luckily, it was a little tiny piece, but you just never know, so definitely don't do it, yeah. Yeah, it's for show, don't right. eat it. So, right. all right, let's cook. Okay, so, let's I cook. have some white fish here, Okay. and what I have is some um, vegetable oil. I have blackening season, my dad would do your blackening season. It's coming soon, y'all. It's coming, it's coming. In the meantime, just go ahead and purchase the original Dabaduya. And then I have some butter. Okay. So what I want you to do is just take a little oil okay. here and just drizzle it on the fish. That's gonna help the blackening seasoning okay. kind of adhere to it. Absolutely. Is that how you do it at uh, It is, yeah. Okay, yeah. so go ahead and do that. And while you're doing that, once you finish that, 
We're gonna put a little bit of vegetable oil here in this hot cast iron skillet because we're gonna blacken this fish. Okay. And we're gonna finish it in the oven. So we're just gonna get a nice, good blackened coat on it and some good color. Absolutely. And then we're gonna finish it in the oven, so. Now I usually like slather it on with my hand. Do you do that? Or I do. Or do you usually, okay. Okay, yeah. so I can get right on in there. Slather I look. it. Slather it. Slather it. Get in there. I like it when people put their, put your elbow you know, you know. into it. All right, good so, to go. Go ahead. So I'm gonna ask some questions. Okay. Because let me tell you, I met um, AB on social media. You know what? I did a Facebook post and I was like, who can decorate my tree? Because I am just like, I know what I like when I see it mm -hmm. with clothes. I'm the same way with decor in my house and with a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. I like it. I know what I like, but then it's so hard for me to put it together myself. Yeah. And then I'm so busy with work, like I can throw together a cocktail and a dish without even thinking about it with my eyes closed. Right. And so somebody like tagged you in a Facebook post. Mm -hmm. and that was almost three years ago. So while we're doing this fish, let me tell you, go ahead and roll it up. Okay. And this is just, you were asking me other way. Oh, uh, other way, okay. Yeah. So then that, that, you see this side here? That's the back of the fish, right? Mm -hmm. So you wanna roll it so that the presentation side is what we call it in the culinary world, chef world, catering world, mm -hmm. so that this side is showing, right? Yeah, I was wondering about that because I've never seen it presented this way. So I like mm -hmm. that. It's something I'm gonna take home to my husband and he's gonna think I did something real fancy and boom, I learned it right here from Chef Jelly. We got yes. fancy drinks and we got fancy food. There you go, I so like that, I like that, I like that. Okay, put a little bit of oil okay. in here. Not too much, just a little. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, that's good. Okay. And then I'm gonna turn this around this way. Okay. It's part of my reach because it's hot, but I wanna keep that oil going that way. Okay. So I'm gonna put one down, and then you're gonna do the, and do the other one. Okay. Um, so tell me, how did you even get into this Christmas tree decorating? Like, how does one create a whole career of so. decorating Christmas trees? All right, so let me tell you how I got started. Okay. So my best friend moved here okay. and she uh, bought all this Christmas stuff and she was like, come help me decorate. Okay, and I was like, absolutely, um, mm -hmm. for sure, I'll come help you decorate. And so I get over there and she just has a ton of decorations. Okay. And so I put everything on the tree. Uh -huh. And so if you know me, my style, I like heavily pack these Christmas trees down. Right. And so the tree just looked really good with all these decorations. And that was your first time? That was my very first time. I mean, I've decorated my like. own. No, I've decorated my own. Okay. Own, but <laughs> I just had never put so much on the tree before. Okay. I'm dropping a little bit of butter in there and that's just gonna help it uh, blacken a little bit better. Okay. And faster. Okay. I've never blackened fish either before, so you I'm learning. Haven't? Yeah, no, so I'm learning something today for sure. Yeah. I like when yeah, I can yeah, teach somebody yeah. something new. Yeah. So anyway, the tree looked really good. She wanted a second tree done. So okay. uh, we went and bought a whole bunch of stuff for a second tree, okay. decorated that one, and then that one also looked amazing. And at the time, we just moved here from Mississippi. Okay. Um, and I am certified to teach in Mississippi, but not here in Texas. Mm -hmm. So I was in the certification process here and I was like, well, maybe to earn some extra money, I can, you know, advertise, you know, a Christmas tree decorating business. Okay. Wasn't legit or anything starting off. I was just really trying to earn some extra money. So right. I advertised on social media, picked up a couple of clients and it truly just kind of went from there. Yeah. Really? I mean, I promise you, this was back in 2014, yeah. And I was listening to the radio one day and one of the radio hosts had said, if you wanna do business with me, uh, you need to have a business social media. I don't wanna be you know, looking through family pictures and things like that. And so I did, I made a business social media account and the rest was kind of history after that. All these people find me through social media, they have a wow. website and things too. But yeah, I mean, a lot of the business is through there. And I feel like I've kind of pioneered Christmas tree decorating or holiday decorating through social media. Wow, and I know that you were telling me when I was like reading about your story that you have taught over a hundred people to start Christmas tree decorating yes. businesses, right? Yes, yes, and that's yes, all yes, through yes. Social, social media? It's all through social media. So what happens is, you know, these people are like, hey. I'm just flipping them right now. Mm, I'm and they're so only excited gonna, about this. They're only gonna <laughs> stay right here for just a second. Then I'm okay. transferring them to this baking sheet and we're gonna put some chicken stock around it to keep the fish nice um, and moist. moist. Yeah, okay. And then we're finishing the oven. 
Perfect. Okay. Perfect. 100 people to oh, yeah. start businesses like yeah, that's where taught, we left Yeah, off. almost 100 people, um, the decorating business. So a lot of them reach out to me and they say, you know, I have this skill, I'm really good at it, but I don't know where to take it from here in order to earn money. And so, yeah, I have this whole presentation. Mm -hmm. um, I sit with people for about an hour and a half to two hours and, you mm -hmm. know, I just kind of take them from the start to the beginning and people have become very successful at it. You know, oh, some people God. even bigger than me now that I taught. Absolutely. That makes you you know, feel good, it makes me feel fantastic, you know, that I've been able to help these people, you know, create this business. Yeah. Because your model is, and my model too, is community over competition. Community over competition. Absolutely. That's 100%. so important. Yeah. Because there's enough room for all of us to eat at the table, it's which is very fitting since we're talking about food, food. right? Yeah. yeah that absolutely. Was just fun. Yeah. Fun absolutely. <laughs> and absolutely. Then, here's the thing you said that you have taught almost a thousand people how to decorate like you. Yes. So some people just want to do it as a hobby yeah. so if you like are into decorating unlike me because it is it stresses me out <laughs> I can make a 10,000 course meal before I want to decorate a tree mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. some people want to do it as a hobby and right. just don't know like all the tips tricks and hacks Exactly. And that's where you come in. Absolutely. And some people, they buy beautiful things, but mm -hmm. they just don't know how to put those things together. So they need a different eye to come in and decorate those trees. And so that's definitely where I come in. Yeah, but the class is fantastic. I always tell them it's a teachable skill, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, most things are a teachable skill. So um, I have in-person classes and I have virtual classes and I really just teach them my strategy because that's all it is. It's really just a strategy, you know, yeah. tell them how to do it. Um, this one person just shared with me. She was so excited. She was like, oh my gosh, my tree got like 6,000 likes in comments last year. She was so excited about that. And I was excited for her, especially when you see the trees. I love it when they show me like a before and an after mm -hmm. picture. Yeah, yeah. It makes and me I, feel good. I love it. You have a, uh, AB has a virtual class coming up on October 1st. I do. So mm -hmm. y'all are going to see this before October 1st, hopefully. Um, and if you don't, you have other virtual classes. I do, I do. So October 1st, virtual class. Follow AB, we're gonna put her uh, social media handles up so that you can register for a class if you wanna learn how to do it. Yeah. Because, you know, it's a little bit of an investment if you're gonna come do it all. I learned that from the beginning. I, I was like, damn, how much it cost for this damn Christmas <laughs> yeah, tree? Yeah. But you know what? It was worth it. And if you're not at the place where you want to make that investment and you like doing it, just take a virtual class. That's all you have to do. Just take the virtual class. Absolutely. I'm mm -hmm. hungry. Yeah, me too. It's time to eat. <laughs> we're going to put the fish in the oven to finish it. And then we're going to make this spicy Creole sauce. Then we're going to plate it all up. We're going to eat. We're going to have a good time. And yeah, stick around. You want to be here with me and AB. You do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, A.B., so we were talking about sauces and yes. condiments because my nickname, one of them is the condiment queen because I got to have a good sauce on everything. Mm -hmm. This is our spicy Creole sauce. Okay. Go ahead and add some wine to it. Um, I have some butter, some garlic. Go ahead. I'll tell you when. That's good. Okay. Here you go. Okay. <laughs> And y'all, y'all know my whisk is all burnt up. I take that. Because that, that lets y'all know I be cooking. Yeah, real it smells real so real. good, too. Doesn't it smell yeah, good? Yeah, it smells amazing. that garlic. Yeah. So we got olive oil. Then we put butter in second to put the olive oil in first to keep mm -hmm. the butter from burning. Mm -hmm. Then we got red peppers, green peppers, yellow onions. And then we put some garlic in, and then you just deglaze it mm -hmm. with some white wine. Mm -hmm. It ain't gotta be no fancy wine, right. just as long as it's not sweet wine, right? Okay, yeah, no, no moscatoes in your cooking, don't do it. <laughs> she already know, because that's just, no, that's a no-no, <laughs> no, right? No, right. You want that tartness and that acidity. Right. So at this point, we're gonna take that flour okay. right there, and you're gonna sprinkle the flour in, and you're gonna keep whisking. Okay. And that's gonna make a roux. Are we gonna use all this flour? We use all of that flour. Okay, so we can just kind of dump it in. Mm -hmm. And just keep working it in. So when you're cooking at home, AB, what are you cooking? Because your kids are older, right? My kids are older, absolutely. Right. Now, I'm going to have to be honest with you. I do definitely feel like I'm a uh, solid four cooking. Okay. Um, but I do like a one pan meal. I like a, a you know, like a, a lasagna or a good soup, a good stew, most definitely. My husband loves a good pork chop. So, okay. yeah, I have to make him some pork chops. And we love roasted vegetables. That's like mm. our favorite. Cauliflower, some broccoli, most definitely. Especially so. this time of year, roasted vegetables are oh, yeah. 
delicious this time of year. And you mentioned one pot meals. Y'all, subscribe to my channel because I just shot a whole bunch of stuff. I got my baked spaghetti. We did my cream of mushroom soup, 100% from scratch. Uh -huh. So easy. Mm -hmm. So you're you're right there with it. One pot dishes are that's, that's where, where it's at. Right yeah, absolutely. It's yeah, for sure. For so sure. So this rule, you want to keep whisking it, and you want to cook out that raw taste of the that's flour. Fun. Have you ever tasted, like, when I was little, don't tell my body, but <laughs> I used to lick the bowl when my grandmother would make pancakes. Yeah. And you know that raw pancake batter taste? Yeah. If you don't cook out your flour, that's mm -hmm. what your sauce it's gonna is going to taste same. like. Mm -hmm. It's going to have that sweet, raw pancake mixture taste. So Got it. Okay. I think this is pretty good. You think good. we're good? Okay. I think so. Let's get around a few more times. Okay. Just for good measure. I'm then, learning something today, y'all. <laughs> I'm learning. This sauce right here, you can make it an Alfredo by removing the peppers and onions. Okay. And do everything that we did. Got it. And then once we get the cream and the uh, chicken sock in there, throw in some cheese. And now you got Alfredo. Okay. Or okay. take out the cheese and then put in some um, citrus zest. And so now you got a citrus cream sauce. Okay. This right here is going to take you a long way. It smells so good, y'all. <laughs> I can smell this. Okay, now we got our chicken stock in there and it's gonna thicken up. Okay. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna add in these crushed tomatoes. Sometimes I will add the crushed tomatoes in before the chicken stock. Usually that's what I do, but this is live YouTube and we don't wanna stop to do it over. Nope. Yeah, but it's okay. So I'm gonna do the crushed tomatoes because this is our Creole sauce it and we're just so gonna good. whisk that in good too. Okay because you don't want to, and I turned it up a little bit just to um, speed up the process. Okay. Because those are crushed tomatoes that came from a can, and that is okay. Trust me, it's okay. It is. But you want to just make sure you whisk and cook that kind of can taste out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why typically I will put the crushed tomatoes in before I put in the chicken stock because that is hitting that hot pan mm -hmm. and it's cooking out. So you see that nice It looks color? so good, it smells so good. It's I'm excited, good my mouth watering a little bit. <laughs> my mouth is watering all the time on this show and if you watch, you already know. <laughs> Just the waterfalls, I Niagara I Falls up this. in this piece. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna add in the heavy cream okay. and I like to, some people will use half and half and if you want to, go ahead, that's on you. But I want the thick, creamy sauce, right? Yeah, I mean, it just makes it a little more rich too. Like you said, it's a thicker, richer taste. Mm -hmm. And so you're gonna whisk that all together. And what I have here, my people who, who've been watching us, the people who are true to this and not new to, not this, new to this, they know that I like my browning. Now, let me just full disclosure. If you were to keep cooking that flour until it got really dark, till mm -hmm. that roux got really dark. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't need the browning, but who got time for that? To be standing over a pot. You know, I've never cooked with browning before, so I'm excited to. All it yeah. does, it really doesn't alter the flavor. Okay, it's just kind of like that extra, so you don't have to waste, I don't want to say waste the time, but, but that extra step. Time. Yeah, spend the time. Of getting yeah, your roux up. very, very, very dark. Okay. So I'm going to put, let me put some adabadouya in there. Okay, gotta have the adabadouya. Gotta have a adabadouya. So I'm gonna put some adabadouya. About that much. Okay. Recipe is gonna be down in the description, so you'll have all the measurements there. But normally I say adabadouya to taste, cause really adabadouya is just, it's a salt, right? It's 40% less sodium than Lowry's, but it's still a salt. So it really depends on your preference. So I'm gonna put a little bit of browning cause a little bit goes a long way. Okay. And that's just so our sauce won't be like a pinky color. Got it. You know, it kind of has a, a richer color. That makes sense. So there we go. So you just whisk I'm that. Just whisking away. Mm-hmm. And if you want your sauce a little bit looser, just add a little bit more chicken stock. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and if for some reason your sauce turns out a little bit thin, mm -hmm. I always keep some roux in my refrigerator or on my counter. Oh. And then I would just break it up and put it in there and thicken 
thicken the sauce up. That's a pro tip. That's a pro tip. That's I, a pro did, I didn't know tip. that. And all roux is is equal parts uh, fat and flour. So it could be bacon fat, it could be butter, it could be olive oil, it could be vegetable oil with an equal part of flour. Okay. And then it forms up, you know, like a paste almost. And then you just keep it in the fridge. And then when you want to thicken a sauce, you get a little spoon and you just kind of drizzle it in there. So do you keep your container of like your bacon fat, like my mom and my grandma used to do after they cooked the bacon, they used to drain the fat off. Do you do the same thing? We do at Low Country Cuisine, my catering company, okay. but I actually don't eat pork. Oh, okay, okay. So I will typically, when I need to make some roux, I'll just grab some butter. Okay. and just make some room. I got some in my refrigerator Makes right sense. now. Because I was making my mushroom soup the other day. Yeah. So, let's see. What, what, what are we looking like? Okay. You know what I'm missing? What? I'm missing a little bit of cayenne pepper. Oh. So Need that's what we're gonna do. We're going to finish the sauce up. I'm gonna put a little cayenne pepper on it. We're gonna bring out that dirty rice. Oof. Yes, and we're gonna put that fish, that blackened fish on top of it. We're gonna drizzle this sauce on it. Okay. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be up and it's stuck. Do yep. people still say that? I'm showing my I age. Think, I <laughs> think they do, every now and again. <laughs> every now and again. <laughs> my goodness, bye, baby, bye. All right, where are we back? <laughs> okay, we are hungry. We've been sipping our witch's potion, and that worked up my appetite. I don't know about you. Absolutely, it did. You ready to eat? I'm ready to eat. Okay, so we have our dirty rice here. So I have a recipe for the dirty rice. I think it's in season one. So go back to season one and get this recipe for the dirty okay. rice. But in the meantime, which piece? Eeny, meeny, miny. I want this one. You want that one? Yeah. Okay, we'll take that one. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blot it here. That's another culinary tip. When you're plating, just blot the extra juices so it doesn't run all over your plate. That makes sense. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm gonna sauce it up. And then you're gonna squeeze the lemon on there because you said you like lemon. I do. It looks so mm -hmm. good, mm -hmm. And just a little extra. Yum. There. And I got a little bit of greenery situation here. I'm just gonna put, let me break a little bit off of there. I'm just gonna put a little bit like that. There we go. It looks so good, y'all. Look at it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It looks fabulous. Doesn't it look great? Okay, so let's taste it, cause pretty food don't do nothing for your stomach. All right, let's get a little bit of lemon on here. Yes. Okay. Ready? I'm ready. You ready? Go ahead. I'm okay. Just do the honors. Mm. Yeah, hold it for me. Go. Right, here we go, y'all. Uh, we don't have a knife, so. You have some leftovers for me, right? I do. <laughs> I do. Oh, that's good. Good? I knew it would be. Mm. This might be better. It is better Your than my face. Mm-hmm. Y'all heard that? Mm. It is so easy. You can make it mm -hmm. at home. Can you believe there's no pork in this dirty rice, though? What did you use? Turkey. <sighs> Turkey sausage. That's a good alternative. Yeah. It tastes so good. Mm, the good. sauce rounds it all together. Very good. Only thing you you're know, missing is a vegetable. I'm gonna just get in there and get it. <laughs> Go right ahead. Some good green beans, some broccoli, some asparagus, or mm -hmm. even a nice, like, light salad. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you got a perfect weeknight meal with the witch's potion. Well, my witch's potion, you can call it which we're out else. of, y'all see, because it was so good. It's good. <laughs> okay. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna just thank you so much for agreeing to come Absolutely. to my house, to be here at home with me, mm -hmm. with Chef Jolie. 
and for doing my Christmas tree. I was gonna say, I'm gonna be back here in like a month and a half. I mean, yeah. it'll be here before we know it, yeah. yeah. I think mm -hmm. I have you scheduled for October or something. Uh, very close to, or yeah, yeah early November, early November. right there, absolutely, yeah. This girl is booked up all the time, so if you're looking for fall decor for your porch, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're inside the home too for I fall. I do, yeah, fall, um, inside, outside, mm -hmm. um, Halloween decorations, really all of the holidays, but definitely Christmas time is booming for That's sure. So mm -hmm. she might be booked up already. Probably not, but tell, <laughs> hit her up and say you saw her on mm -hmm. At Home with Chef Jolie mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. YouTube. And y'all make sure to subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications and all that stuff. I'm gonna see if I can get AB back for Christmas because it's only right. Tell her y'all want me. Comment and tell yes. her that y'all want Comment. me. Comment and I'm gonna teach AB how to make collard greens because she never made collard greens from scratch. There we go. It's just gonna be a Christmas and collard green episode. I love it. I like what it. What do y'all think? I like it. All right, we're gonna finish up this food. We'll see y'all next time on At Home with Chef Jolie. Bye. See y'all later.